2018. I hope you guys had a wonderful uh, 2017, a wonderful end of the year celebration. I hope you guys are all safe and happy and all that good stuff. And um, I am so happy to be able to be with you guys. You're alive. <laughs> um, I am trying to do this live stream um, using a tablet also so I can see your comments more easily. Um, as you guys know in the past, it's been difficult for me to keep up. So this way I'll be able to see your stuff live and then hopefully I'll be able to respond to any questions you have. Um, but first, before we get into this video, I really do want to thank you guys for all of your love and support over the past year. Last year was just an amazing year of growth, you know, personally, but also in terms of our relationship on this channel, the way that we have shared with one another. And um, I appreciate you guys being with me through, you know, my issues with, you know, my mom and just loss, dealing with that, dealing with, you know, mammograms and dealing with natural hair stuff and all that kind of thing. I just want you guys to know that I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you for letting me be me. And I'm so happy that we have created this really wonderful space for women here on YouTube. So again, I just wanted to thank you guys so much. And um, I am going to try to keep this live stream to a minimum <laughs> in terms of time because I did hear your feedback from some of you. Some of you guys love the really long, long conversations we have on here, but some of you want like bite-sized nuggets. And so I'm going to make an effort to do that in these live streams um, kind of moving forward as well. So everybody gets a little bit of what they want. All right. So um, if you've watched my last few videos, then you know that I had been wearing my hair in a protective style and I have finally brought the curls back. Um, I actually did this sort of accidentally. I <laughs> I um, had to go to um, DC or I went to DC over uh, the holidays, celebrate um, New Year's with Eric. Those of you who've seen the vlogs have come on that journey with us, um, but I didn't, I wasn't able to do the protective style I'd intended to do. I prefer to travel with a protective style because who wants to spend time on their hair when you're traveling? I really want to, you know, be able to enjoy myself, but I didn't have an opportunity um, or the time to do a protective style. So I just brought my curls back and I want to show to you guys that although my, um, the protective style I did was a U-part wig, I had this part of my hair out. I did wand curl it as you guys saw me do live. Um, and no heat damage, no heat damage. So I wore the U-part wig for um, probably about three weeks and then I used the um, wand curler on my hair and, you know, again, no damage. And I think that a lot, a lot of that had to do with the fact um, that I used a really, really good heat protectant. And so I'm just going to mention that one again because this worked well. It didn't weigh my hair down. It didn't leave any residue on the hair. Um, it didn't make it, fit, you know, um, when we have fine hair, a lot of times we're worried that any products we add to the hair will lay it down. But as you guys saw in my Instagram photos, uh, boldly blending out on Instagram or here on YouTube, it did not weigh my hair down at all. And it left my hair feeling really soft and um, really beautiful. So this works really well. I can vouch for it. This is the Tresemme Thermal Creations Heat Protectant. It protects hair up to 450 degrees. I didn't go that high because I ain't gonna put that much heat on my hair. <laughs> but it works really well. And then this one is volume boosting. So I'm just gonna hold this up in case you decide to pick it up. I'll try to um, also leave a link to it below. I left a link to some of the other things I'm gonna talk about in this video below because you guys are always asking me about it midstream. So I thought at least the information will be down there and you guys can... Um, you know, look at it at, at your leisure to learn more about anything that I'm talking about on this channel. Um, but yeah, I can vouch for this. This works really, really wonderfully. Um, so that really helped along with the fact that I did not put heat on my hair every day. I would, um, one, I wand curled it, 
This had great hold, by the way. And so I only applied heat on my hair like maybe twice a week. Um, sometimes not even that often. Sometimes like maybe every three or four days, something of that nature. So one thing you want to remember about heat damage in general is that heat damage is usually, usually a collective um, you know, long-term sort of process, unless you do something like, you know, you get one of the Brazil, the blowouts and they're applying so much heat to your hair all at once. A lot of times you'll experience heat damage that way, but a lot of times it happens a little bit over a long period of time or several times applying heat to the hair. So if you minimize the amount of heat you add to your hair, you will significantly decrease the likelihood that you will experience um, heat damage on your hair all right so one of the things that I did after um, I knew that I was going to want to bring my wash and go back was I wanted to kind of revive my curls so I thought this would be a great time to talk about how I rehab my curls um, in winter because that's when I did this <laughs> um, but then also um, how you can revive your curls after you blow your hair out for an extended amount of time all right so if you guys are up for that please do hit the like button please do share this video with others um hopefully they'll find information that is really helpful i try to be hey felicia i try to be as educational as possible and again i'm going to try to do that in a minimal amount of time so that this live stream isn't super long and everybody gets a little bit of what they need all right so um, let's jump right into it. So, um, the first thing I did to rehab my curls, happy new year to you, huh? <laughs> happy, happy new year. <laughs> so one of the things that I do straight away when I'm going to revive my curls during the, um, during the winter months is I go in, oh my gosh, I didn't even bring it over here. Hold on, hold the phone, y'all. <laughs> I'll be right back. Here we go. <laughs> I told you it was going to be one second. All right. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I do is I go in with a protein treatment. This is my absolutely, my absolutely my favorite. And I didn't put it below because I totally forgot about it. But um, I like to go in and I do um, a protein treatment, even though I do, um, hey, y'all are coming on in here. Hey, I'm so glad you guys are here and happy new year to you, hon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the thing you want to do to reconstruct your curls or rehab your curls, the easiest thing you can do is to give yourself a protein treatment. Now, how do you know you need a protein treatment, especially if you're not, you know, blowing your hair out? Like, when do you do it? If your curls are starting to look really wiry, if they're starting to look really lackluster, if they're starting to feel really spongy, if they're starting to droop, you're just not getting that pop, it could be that your hair is just fiending for a bit of protein. So it's really important to find a good protein conditioner. And so that was kind of the basis of um, my moisture uh, regimen to rehab and revive my curls. So the first thing, um, I did, and some people may say that this is something that I'm doing in reverse. I don't feel like it's it's worked well for me, okay? So people can say what they wanna say. You gotta do what works for your hair. So the first thing I do is I um, wet my hair and then I went in with my GPB conditioner by Aubrey Organics. I have been using this for as long as I have been natural. Um, I did try uh, making my own DIY um protein conditioners and they are great but one of the things that happens when you do a diy protein conditioner is that the proteins in like the greek yogurt or whatever you're using to deliver the protein to your hair it cannot break down small enough to get into the hair shaft um and so you're not going to be getting as much bang for your buck when you do the protein treatment so while i do like to do the diys for myself occasionally a lot of times i will go reach for a product because it is formulated to deliver that protein to my hair as quick as possible and when you don't have a lot of time you need to do kind of what's going to give you the immediate result you want um i like the the gpb conditioner because it is more on the natural 
natural side. So I like to use products that are more natural, um, have more natural ingredients, so on and so forth. And so if you are someone who likes, you know, that kind of formulation, then I highly suggest um, using this product. I, like I said, I didn't put a link to it, but I will do it after this video goes up. Again, it's the only leave-in conditioner I have used. It contains organic ingredients. It's just, you know, it helps with the moisture retention of your hair. And what protein does for the hair, I didn't mention that, is that it strengthens the hair. So after you have done something like applied heat to your hair or you've put your hair through a lot of stuff, you want to go in and you want to make sure that you're strengthening it. So what it will do is it will kind of fill the gaps that are weak in your hair and that's how it fortifies and strengthens the hair. Um, really, really super great ingredients. Again, I'll put a link below so you can link to the product and see all the amazing ingredients it has in it. But yeah, this is absolutely amazing. Even if you are protein sensitive, I would say use this, leave it in for like five minutes and then rinse it out. I left mine in for 10 minutes because I hadn't done a protein treatment in a long time and I knew that the heat had probably broken my hair down just a little bit and um, also I wanted to do what I could to revive my curls as quickly as quickly as quickly as possible and as you can see they came back absolutely beautifully all right so first step is my protein conditioner then I go in and I shampoo my hair I use a very gentle shampoo for my hair all right so because of the fact um, I used this on my hair and it did have like some ingredients that are not water soluble and I wanted to break those ingredients, you know, down. Um, I went ahead and I used a, a clarifying shampoo. You want to clarify your hair at least, well, it depends on the ingredients you use. I don't use a lot of products with silicones um, and ingredients that aren't water soluble. That means that when you put water on your hair, they won't just rinse away. There are some ingredients um, like uh, silicones, for instance, that actually coat the hair and you have to go in with a clarifying shampoo to actually lift that stuff from the hair. So if you find that your hair dries out really quickly, you do a deep conditioner and then the next day it's dry as a bone, that's because the deep conditioner does not have an opportunity to penetrate your hair shaft because you have some buildup on it. So you wanna use a clarifying conditioner to help get that stuff off of your scalp and then also your strands. All right, so I went in with Fala Cleanse Shampoo I am going to recommend another one. I actually, I wasn't going to talk about this on the channel because I thought they stopped making it. But lo and behold, I went on Amazon and they had it. I promise you, you can find every and anything on Amazon. I am an Amazon Prime member. So that's just where I go because I don't have to pay for ship. Like why pay for shipping? Like seriously, why? So I'm all about Amazon <laughs> Prime. So I went on and they had it. So the uh, Fala Cleanse line is really great for fine hair. It's great for anyone. You do too, <laughs> God first. I'm glad I'm no, I'm so glad I'm not the only one who is in love with Amazon. Like I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> okay, so, um, so the Fala Cleanse product is really great for fine hair um, because Every ingredient in here, or a lot of the ingredients in here, are about strengthening the hair. And when you have fine hair or you have fragile hair, maybe you're dealing with breakage, you know, those kind of situations, this is just a great product to, again, help fortify and strengthen the hair as you're washing and conditioning it. Now, I don't use a lot of shampoos, but when I shampoo, I either use this one. If I'm clarifying, I use the OS formula. If um, I, I still have some of the DS formula that is more uh, about moisture retention. And so sometimes I will use that as well. I love your curl. I have fine hair. Oh, good. Thank you, Catherine. Girl, fine hair is a struggle. It is a ministry. I'm telling y'all, it's a ministry. And you are in the class, the ministry class for fine hair. Whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're in the right place. All of this stuff works for all hair types, but when we have fine hair, we got some extra stuff to deal with, okay? We have some extra trials and tribulations, so we just have to embrace the fact that we have those trials and tribulations and figure out how to make it work and share information. <laughs> so this product is absolutely amazing. It has great slip, and the thing I want to tell you guys is 
that a lot of times people are afraid to use shampoo or they're afraid to use clarifying shampoo because they're like, it will strip my hair. It will strip my hair. My hair is going to be bone dry. It's usually because it's not being used properly. I have a, I have a, um, a playlist on here called Fine Hair Boot Camp, and I talk about the proper way to use clarifying shampoo. I'm just going to tell you really quickly because I want to keep the time limit. We're already at 15 minutes. Goodness. I want to keep the time limit down on this live stream. But when you use a, a clarifying shampoo, it is okay to put it like um, in a water bottle and add. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> it is okay to put it in a water bottle, mix it up, and then spray it on your scalp. Do not take the product like, you know, they show in um, like all of the, you know, uh, uh, head and shoulders <laughs> commercials where you're just lathering it up all over your head. You don't want to do that. That is what's going to strip your hair. Clarifying shampoos and really most shampoos are strong enough and they're formulated to very easily remove the, um, the uh, a residue from the hair. So, and, and really they're designed to cleanse your scalp, not your hair. So you want to take it and if you're going to use it directly on the scalp, that's fine. Just take a little bit, put it on your fingertips and massage it into your scalp to lift all the product um, uh, ingredients off of your scalp, uh, product buildup off your scalp to, you know, massage uh, the scalp so you're promoting hair growth, all of those wonderful things. Or put it in the water bottle and then spray it directly on the scalp and then scrub the scalp. Then at the very end, right before you rinse it out, you want to work it down to the ends. You wanna work it down the rest of your hair. That is all that's needed to lift uh, product residue, silicones, parabens, all that stuff from your hair, all right? So do not take the product and put it directly on the hair and start cleansing your hair. That is the thing that's gonna dry your hair out, okay? So I just took a little bit of this, I put it on my scalp, and then I brought it down, you know, this the shaft of the hair, and then I rinsed it out. And then that's how I got, you know, any of the non-water soluble ingredients uh, from this stuff, or again, if you use any uh, product ingredients uh, that have silicone, silicone, parabens, et cetera, in it, that's how you can remove them from the hair. That'll help tremendously with you being able to maintain the uh, moisture balance of your hair. All right. So that's the first step. Um, and I do that again because this process is all about moisture retention. So you have to lift those cones off of your hair. You have to lift that residue off of your hair so that the products that you use for moisture retention are actually able to get to your hair, like lay directly on your hair and penetrate that hair shaft, okay? Um, now this you could do before or after that process. I only did the um, the only did this beforehand because I'm not a person who uses a lot of non water soluble products on my hair. I don't use products that have parabens and silicones and stuff like that in it. Now, if I was a person who used those products every day, I would do this after I clarify. But because I don't, there isn't really a lot of buildup on my hair, I did it beforehand. And I left this on, I didn't mention, I left this on for about 15 minutes and I wrapped my hair up so that I could get some heat going near my scalp. That's going to help lift the cuticle of the hair and it's going to allow the protein to really absorb into the hair. All right. Um, otherwise, you could use, I highly recommend, um, like you guys know, I love Elucens. Like I've been talking about this product because it's my holy grail. I've been using it again for as long as I've been natural, like at least, I don't know, four years, maybe longer. Um, but they also have a moisture shampoo. I did not bring it because I only had this much left and Miora used it. The bottle is not cute. <laughs> it's got suds on it and all that kind of stuff. But it is a moisture, um, it is a moisture, uh, moisturizing shampoo. It's the Moisture Benefit Shampoo. And I like it because it's formulated to work with their other products. Um, one of the other reasons I like it is because it isn't stripping to the hair. So your hair really does feel soft. It's not going to, you know, again, dry it out, although it's a shampoo. But again, even though it is a very, very gentle shampoo, use it on that scalp. Use that treatment that I just talked about. And I will link a video to my fine hair, um, 
boot camp or I'll, I'll put a link to my fine hair boot camp series so you guys can kind of see the process that I follow on wash day. All right, so after, um, actually after I did that, I went ahead and I did an ext uh, extended moisture repair treatment. Now I like the um, this product. This is it. It is, again, it's by Elucence. And what it does is it strengthens your weak hair and then it has um, plant derivatives that uh, deliver moisture to the inner part of the hair shaft. So with this process, like you're getting probably the picture at this point, everything I do is about supporting the moisture balance of my hair. Guys, if you find this information to be helpful, can you please thumbs up this video so I know that? Because then I can do more educational videos, I guess. I don't do them very often. I used to do them all the time when I first launched this channel, but I don't know if people are interested in that. And I really do want to incorporate more natural hair, fine hair education um, into my uploads for you know, 2018. So if you're finding this information to be helpful, please do thumbs up. And then also, you know, if you can leave me a comment, you know, after this video goes live so I can do more of this type of thing because I really love it. All right. So yeah, so I love this. You only need to leave it on for maybe 10 minutes. Um, and it does a really good job again of helping to fortify, you know, the hair, um, repairing it and then also helping to infuse uh, moisture to that center most part of the hair, which helps you to uh, lengthen the moisture retention of your hair over a long period of time. I just got a question, do you air dry? Yes, God first, I do. Um, in the winter time, it's very rare that I use a diffuser um, in the winter time unless I like have somewhere to go. The reason for that is I want to retain as much moisture as possible. Um, and in the summertime, I can diffuse because there's usually a lot of moisture in the air. Um, and so any moisture that is lost, perhaps, by <laughs> diffusing my hair, um, I know is going to be replenished really easily. However, in the wintertime, because it's so dry, usually inside our homes, because we have the heat on, it's dry inside you know, our cars, because we got the heat on there, and then we go to work, the heat is on. So the environment in which we operate is more, um, you know, is drier. So I opt to uh, let my hair air dry so that I can just retain as much moisture as possible. All right, so after I do um, the extended repair treatment, then I go in with my moisture balancing conditioner. Now, um, I actually go ahead and just use this as my leave-in. So I don't condition and then add a leave-in. I use this as my leave-in. One of the reasons I have been raving about this, and those of you who've been watching me for a while, y'all already know, but one of the reasons um, I like to use this product is because it is multi-purpose. So you can use it as a rinse-out conditioner. I would not because this stuff is just like gold. You don't wanna rinse it down <laughs> the drain. I would use a less expensive rinse out conditioner, but you know you can use it um, as a rinse out conditioner, which is great for if you're traveling and you only wanna take one conditioning product with you. Um, but you can use it as a, um, a rinse out conditioner. You can use it as a deep conditioner and you can use it as a leave-in. So it is literally a three in one product. And I absolutely love this product because it melts tangles like if you have any kinks or knots in your hair it melts those it has such great uh detangling emollients in it that is absolutely amazing and this is a conditioner that will keep your hair um moisturized i would say over a at least a three-day period of time a really well formulated conditioner will leave your hair moisturized for you know at least at least three days in a row um, and it'll continue to work if you want to reactivate it all you have to do is add a little water to your hair and it should simply react re reactivate that product all right so that's what i do again it's also supporting the moisture balance of my hair so it's going to help my curls to pop back it's going to keep my hair really healthy it's going to contribute to great elasticity so it's supporting the um length retention of the hair all that good stuff so highly, highly recommend this. 
All right, so then the next things that I use are um, stylers. And the styler um, I use, so I'm gonna talk about stylers for wash and go, and then I'm gonna suggest another styler that I find to be really good um, when it comes to rehabbing the hair, keeping um, the hair nice and curly, keeping it healthy and supporting moisture balance. So I could talk about like cream products and all that stuff and maybe that'll be a separate video, but for this video, I'm gonna focus on gel stylers um, because a lot of people will stay away from gels because they think they're gonna be drying during the winter time, but really there are some really great products on the market that are absolutely amazing and I actually prefer them to cream products, all right? So the first one I'm going to uh, talk about is by Curl Junkie, y'all. I don't know if you've ever tried Curl Junkie leave-in conditioners. They are amazing. Their gel, this pattern pusher gel is absolutely amazing. Don't judge me because it is dirty. I have had this bottle for over a year, over a year. In fact, when I pulled it out this morning because I reactivated my curls um, this morning and I'll tell you about that in a minute. I pulled this out and I was like, okay, I know it's going to be really, really hydrating. It's going to help to you know, support the water that I've added to my hair and that moisture retention. But I've had this for so long. I wonder if it still works. And obviously, look, it worked. And it felt so good going in. So this gel has amazing, amazing slip. It gives great curl definition. It gives a nice shine to the hair. And it has a medium hold. So it leaves the hair sort of touchably, um, touchably soft. One of the things I like about it, again, it has amazing curl definition, as you can tell, but um, it helps to banish frizz. Um, and again, the other thing that's really important to me is that it supports the moisture balance of my hair. So there are some gels that don't do anything for your hair, but this one has, um, it's really well formulated. It doesn't have any bad alcohols in it. And again, it just... It works well in, um, you know, low do. So it's just going to support the moisture balance of your hair really, really well, which is great when there isn't a lot of moisture in the air. Um, and so this one doesn't have humectants in it, so it's not going to be drying to the hair. It's just a great all around gel. Again, great slip, great definition, and the ingredients actually support the moisture balance of your hair. So it leaves your hair feeling um, healthy and moisturized and um, it helps you to seal in that moisture um, that you've applied to your hair before you put it on. So I, I will say this, before I put the gel on, I just use a water bottle, I spritz it on my hair. You guys have seen me do this before and then I run it over my hair. I do this every morning. Um, if you're concerned that your hair might not be dry before you leave out, I highly suggest you do it then at night or you know when you come home and you'll be inside for a while. The reason I suggest doing that is because to me, especially in winter, in order to maintain the moisture balance of your hair, to keep your hair healthy, to get those curls rehabbed, and to keep that almighty moisture in that hair shaft, you have to apply water. You can't just apply products because pl products are not going to add moisture to your hair. They will support moisture retention. They may have some water in them. They may be, even be water-based, which is absolutely wonderful, but they're not going to deliver the moisture that water or a liquid will. So you have to put that on your hair every day in order to keep your curls looking healthy. So that's what I do at night. Now, a quick way to do it is just to use, you guys have seen this, this is nothing new, Mario Badescu. You know, I spritz my hair with this. You could even do that. Um, but I do suggest putting even a little bit more, you know, moisture on your hair by using water, just spritzing it with water and rubbing it through. So glad you, Faith girl, you know, you can't just keep <laughs> piling products on. And then people are like, I don't understand why my hair is dry. And, you know, sometimes these labels are misleading because it tells you, you know, this is a moisturizing product and it's not moisturizing. It's going to support moisture retention. But you gotta you gotta use that liquid to actually add moisture to the hair. All right, let me get off my soapbox. All right, so um, I talked about pattern pusher. I love this gel. Love it, love it, love it. 
All right, so two others. This is a boutique sort of gel. Like, I put a link to it. You can find it online. Um, but it's not something that you... In most states, in cities, you're not going to find this in your local store. You have to order it online. And to me, I love it so much, I just order it online when I'm treating myself. I love it. It's the best gel ever. It works great for wash and goes. It works great for flexi rod sets. It's multi-purpose, so it works for everything. It is hard to find. Um, but thank you, Amazon. I'm able to get mine from Amazon. <laughs> and that's where I pick it up. So, yeah. Um, but two other products that are easier to find, easier to find are by Curls. And you guys have probably heard of these products. I'm going to tell you what I like about each, um, each one. All right. So the Goddess Curls Botanical Gel, that is this one. And I really like this gel in particular for wash and goes um, because it will leave the hair very soft. Rochelle told me I need to leave these products up for a longer period of time so you all could see them. So that's what I'm doing. But um, I love it. It is like the perfect gel for wash and goes. Um, it fights frizz and it revitalizes damaged hair, which is great because our hair really does take a beating in the wintertime, um, especially if you live in an extreme climate like I do. I live in the Midwest, so our winters are really, really harsh. It's nothing for us to have below zero, you know, temperatures. And then again, you know, we have all this heat and stuff happening inside. So the environment is just very, very dry. So I love it because it does revitalize um, damaged hair. Your hair doesn't have to be damaged to benefit from that, but you know, just fragile or fine, or, you know, it's going to have all of those ingredients. And these are more on the natural side as well, that are just going to fortify the hair to keep it as strong as possible. And that's really important when you have fine hair. Or if you're dealing with breakage or, you know, other issues, or to me, even if you just want to maintain healthy hair, you know, so I love the fact that it does that. Now, this says it adds moisture. It's probably saying that because the first ingredient is water. So technically, yeah, it does add moisture, but you want to pair it with water. Okay, don't just use this. Um, definitely pair it with water and... Again, this is going to leave your hair feeling, you know, just great, like butter, really smooth, really soft. It definitely supports the moisture balance of the hair. So I really, really like this one, the Goddess Curls for uh, wash and goes. The product I like for every other kind of style, like flexi rod set, um, a twist out, braid out, coils, etc is the um, Blueberry Bliss Control Jelly. And this could just be an issue with folks with fine hair, but I find that this one is just way too heavy for uh, fine hair. Like it weighs my hair down significantly and that's probably because um, it has castor oil in it and I think it's like the third ingredient. So it's just way too heavy for my hair. But if I'm doing like a twist out or a braid out or something of that nature, I really do like it. Um, it also tames frizz. Like I said, it's perfect for uh, twist outs and braid outs. It adds shine because it does have the castor oil in it. And that's one of the benefits of castor oil. Um, and it also, you know, um, helps to restore and protect the hair. That's again, another benefit of castor oil. So it's gonna help you with length retention. It's gonna help with the elasticity of your hair, that sort of thing. But yeah, this one I highly recommend. It will leave your hair feeling very soft and moisturized and all that good stuff. It's absolutely amazing. You just have to think about, you know, what style you're doing if you have fine hair like I do, um, because otherwise it's just gonna be a mess. Like, I don't like the way it feels on my wash and go. I don't like the way the wash and go looks. It just weighs it down. But every other style, it's absolutely perfect, okay? So, wash and go, <laughs> everything else. Wash and go, everything else, especially if you have fine hair like I do. All right, so um, that is pretty much it. I do highly suggest sleeping on a satin pillowcase or, you know, using a scarf because uh, cotton pillowcases are just going to pull <clears throat> the moisture out of your hair. And so your goal is to maintain the precious, precious little bit of moisture 
<laughs> you've added to your hair. Like, why go through this whole process if you're not going to try to maintain as much moisture as possible? So um, when it comes to all other activities, I highly, highly suggest, again, adding water to your hair every day or every other day. Now, if you have low density, like I don't have high density hair and I have fine hair. So I know <clears throat> that I can add water to my hair in the morning and it's going to be dry by the time it's, it's time for me to leave. And I'm not talking about saturating your hair with water. I'm talking about spraying some like to your hand or if you're in the bathroom, just running some water over your hands and then just, you know, going like this down a section of hair. <clears throat> you do not have to add additional product to your hair unless you choose to. That water should simply be um, reactivating the product that's already in your hair. If you're using a good leave-in and you're using a good gel, you'll be good to go. But I highly suggest suggest doing that every day or at least every other day, especially if you live in really, really um, extreme temperatures like I do. And then, you know, just following this process <coughs> when, um, you know, you come to your, when you have your wash day, these few little steps will make a huge difference in the look of your hair. Like I can tell when I haven't been you know, going back to basics and using these curl rehab methods because my hair will get really, really wiry. I'll have, um, you see how my hair like is nicely clumped together in these sections? <clears throat> it won't do that. It will just look amazingly frizzy and the hair is frizzy because it's dry. Whenever your hair is, you know, behaving in a way that you know it doesn't normally behave in, it's misbehaving, That's mean, that means it's telling you it needs something. So again, if those curls are just limp, <clears throat> they're spongy, something just looks off, you know, think about doing a protein treatment and then, you know, a moisture retention based regimen. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> Thank you. You know, they weren't like this <laughs> a bit ago <laughs> because I always, you know, I, I hadn't been including my protein and I had just not been doing really well with my hair. My hair always feels wiry. <clears throat> you know what? I would suggest, what do you mean by wiry? Do, if, if it feels wiry, then maybe you're saying that it feels really dry. You know, maybe it feels hard or brittle. In those cases, um, you know, like I said, consider doing a clarifying treatment of the hair because maybe the hair just isn't getting the moisture it needs. You know, the stuff you're putting on your hair isn't able to penetrate the hair shaft. Gel makes it feel that way. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, okay, let me just finish this thought. If you feel like your hair is really dry, it's hard, it feels wiry, you know, that kind of thing then, you know, definitely clarify your hair. It could be that you <clears throat> simply have parabens and silicones, etc., built up on the hair. And so the ingredients of the really good products you're using aren't able to penetrate the hair shaft. So definitely try that, lift all that stuff off, and then do good moisturizing regimen like the one we just discussed. Now, when it comes to gel, if you're finding that your gel is simply leaving a hard cast on your hair, meaning your hair feels a little crunchy after, you know, you apply it, let it go ahead and dry and then scrunch it like this. Now, I do that sometimes and sometimes I just like scrunch it like this and I don't add anything else to your to my hands, but you could add um like a good carrier oil, you know, like a, do a light one like a, if you have fine hair like a almond oil or um, even a nice light jojoba oil. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of others. I, of course, can't think of them right now. But use those. Just put a little bit on the palms of your hands and then scrunch it out. All you have to do is scrunch, scrunch the crunch out and it will get softer. You could even use, if you're doing a wash and go, I was going to say you could even use this Burdick Root product. Um, I love this. This is by Quimet Biologics, but I'm kind of on the fence about using this with a wash and go. I don't get the best results when I use this with a wash and go, but um, 
you know, maybe find a cream based product that you really like that works well with your wash and go. And then just scrunch it. And then the crunch will go away. Just kind of, you know, scrunch it out and then it'll soften up. But I have to tell you that if it's getting too crunchy, it could be that you're applying too much gel to the hair. So think about that because uh, sometimes we just apply too much product. We're really heavy handed with the product and we don't realize it. And our hair just needs a little less than what we're doing. And so that's why it can get really crunchy just because we're using a little too much product. Try using a little bit less and then scrunching it out and that crunch should go away. Um, especially if you scrunch with a nice light oil. All right, so I hope that helps. Let me know. Let me know the next time you know you do this and um, hopefully it will help for you. Oh gosh, you know what? Let me know how you like that line. Uh, how do you say that? Is it Melly? M-E-I-L-L-E -L -L -E line? I have not tried that line. If you guys have tried it and you can suggest some products to me, please let me know because I do want to try some other product lines um, this year and I'm always at a loss as to what to try because it can get so overwhelming when you you know go in to buy the products and there's like a bunch and you don't know where to start so if you guys have product suggestions please do hit I'm supposed to up and let me know what products should I try all right um are there any more questions got for first this was a very informative chat oh good I'm glad you liked it girl I tried to make it shorter. We're at 41 minutes, <laughs> but there are a lot of you guys in here. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope that, you know, everybody got something um, from today's chat. Again, if you'd like to see more informative chats like this, um, please, please, please. You are welcome. <laughs> if you'd like to see more chats like these, please, please, please thumbs up. Please, please, please share them with others so that, you know, I can get more ideas about the types of things you'd like for me to do very informative chats regarding. Um, and again, so I know you like these types of videos. Like I don't have to always do them as chats. I can do them as shorter videos. Um, and so your feedback just kind of helps me figure out what to do when and what uh, type of content to focus on. My goal here is to, again, create a really useful environment that is helpful to all of us and that is kind of driven by what your needs are. I know when I was first, you know, going natural, my need was to see a fine haired natural <laughs> and I just wasn't seeing fine haired naturals. I saw people who said they had fine hair, but I'm like, my hair don't look like that. No, it does not. You ain't got fine hair, honey. <laughs> but to her, it may have felt like fine hair based upon, you know, her, folks in her family, you know. Um, or she may have very dense hair that is fine. I don't know. Please do more educational videos. Okay, Jan, I will. <laughs> but yeah, that was a need I had. And I wanted to see people talk about what products were best for my hair and how to use products properly for fine hair. Because I was shellacking stuff on, y'all. And my hair was so, it was so weighed down. <laughs> Those techniques did not work for me. And, um, you know, I had, I, I so I didn't have, those kind of tools. I didn't have that kind of information. And so that's what really drove me to kind of start this channel. So, you know, I want to know what it is you guys want to see. So I'm just happy that we have this environment to share and that you guys like give me so much feedback and so much positive energy. And again, I just appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys for, you know, embracing my corny, uh, <laughs> slightly crazy self. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for joining me. I will see you in the comment section. All right, if you haven't had a chance or you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I always forget to do that. And you guys are like, you need to remind people to subscribe. You need to remind people to like, and I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna get better. But <laughs> please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the comments or I'll see you under the community section of uh, this channel where we talk about various stuff and, you know, I try to do surveys to see what you guys would like to see me uh, address next. All right. Thank you guys. Love you. Have a great evening and let's have a phenomenal <gasps> 2018. Okay. I wonder if I should do this as a separate video.
I'm going to do it as a separate video. I want you guys to do a challenge with me, okay? All right. I'll talk about it later, though. All right. Bye. <laughs> if I can figure out how to shut this channel off, y'all. <laughs> Are you sure you want to stop on streaming? Yes. All right. See you guys. Bye.